Let's talk about politics, and environmental science, global warming, constitutional rights, social and economic challenges, money, power, choice. Nature does not compromise. Free droughts, free heat waves. Sea levels are rising, and it is about climate change. This is the uh, future of the next generation. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk About Climate, a podcast where we talk about climate change and how it relates to all of us. Join us at Change of Chamber Fellows as we talk with scientists, grassroots campaigners, politicians, and more as we open up the conversation on climate. I'm your host, Will, and today we are joined by our special guest, Deborah McNamara from The Climate Voice, where we will be discussing Climate Voice's mission, why climate action is needed, and more. This is Let's Talk About Climate. All right, well, welcome, Deborah. So um, I'm going to turn the table over to you before we get into our talking points, and uh, if you just want to introduce yourself to our listeners, that'd be great. Sure. Thanks so much for having me, Will. I'm Deb McNamara, and I am the co-executive director at Climate Voice, which is a nonprofit that works with employees and businesses in advocating for stronger climate policy action. Awesome. Well, to be here. Yeah, welcome. It's great to have you. Um, so our first talking point, Deb, is um, if you could tell us a little bit more about why the policy lever and strong policy action are needed now. Yeah, th thanks, Will. So um, I guess another um, piece I just wanted to share about my own background is that I've been working in the climate and environmental nonprofit community for a little bit over 20 years. And one of the things that has been really challenging to see at the same time, there's there are positives, but it's challenging to see so uh, many initiatives underway, so, so much progress in certain areas. Um, there really is a booming climate movement afoot However, uh, uh, greenhouse gas emissions are not going down. In fact, they're continuing to rise. So when it comes with when it comes to actually solving and even addressing the root causes of climate change and the climate crisis, we are not getting where we need to be, and we absolutely need the policy lever to get us there. So uh, you know we have all of these really ambitious goals. Um, even in the private sector, we have I think it's over half of uh, companies globally have net zero commitments now, um, lots of laudable commitments and targets out there, but we, we need uh, mechanisms in order for uh, the enabling of all of us to meet these goals that we know we need to meet. And the policy sphere is really um, where that needs to take place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. Um, so that kind of leads us into our next talking point slash question. Um, so why does the private sector or, or why they need to be doing more for advocating for um, stronger policy solutions? Yeah, so I think one thing that's an imp important for listeners to know is that um, it's not just individuals voting and making their voices heard that makes a difference, but our, our system is dominated by corporate interests and the private sector is already playing a role in policy. Um, so a lot of companies will say, oh, we don't we don't do politics, but they are engaged in policy. And unfortunately, what has happened and what is continuing to happen is that the fossil fuel industry is dominating the policy discourse, especially when it when it comes to climate policy. Mm -hmm. So um, our theory of change at Climate Voice is that we need more uh, companies and more subsets within the, the private sector to be raising their voice and actively lobbying for and advocating for climate policy progress. So right now, um, for example, when it comes, comes to climate policy issues, uh, the oil and gas industry is spending 50% or more of their lobbying power lobbying against climate policy progress. So actively opposing the progress that we need in order to get where we need to be. Um, just as a point of contrast, for example, um, in the big tech sector, uh, there was a study done a couple of years ago by Influence Map, and that showed that big tech was only dedicating about four to six percent of their lobbying power to advocate for climate policy progress. So there is this huge, um, you know, imbalance happening right now. And unfortunately, what's been happening in the policy space is that you know it's it's often the oil and gas industry lobbying against, obstructing progress. And then you have community and environmental groups lobbying for, um, and the NGO, and NGO community is growing as, as we are talking about earlier. But unfortunately, when it comes to dollars and um, political capital and power, 
there is just no comparison. So yeah. the fossil fuel industry is dominating. Companies who care about climate, and there are so many now, need to actively step up and get, you know, get their skin in the game, so to speak. We want companies and their employees to be all in, recognizing that this is the most important place where where change can happen. Yeah, well said. Yeah, we've, it's like a David and Goliath situation right now, and uh, you know, we we need we need some of these bigger tech companies and other companies to kind of put their money where their mouth is and, uh, you know, get behind the cause. Um, so that leads us to our next um, point. So um, if you could talk about the role of trade associations and also the U.S. Chamber of Commerce's track record on climate lobbying. Yes, yes. So um, I'm glad you're, yeah, I know I, knew, I know we we're going to talk about this, but this is really important. Mm -hmm. So I think what what our listeners need to understand and anybody who um, who has a job <laughs> uh, needs to be looking at how your employer um, is is uh, participating in climate policy battles mm -hmm. and issues. Um, so unfortunately, what we're seeing is that companies who identify as being, you know, we call it pro climate. So companies who are leading um, in some way in the climate space um, or su the sustainability space are unfortunately um, letting themselves be represented by trade associations such as the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. So what is happening is that you know the U.S. Chamber of Commerce is one of the, if not the largest trade association trade association in the world, certainly in the United States, and they are. Um, actively lobbying against climate policy progress in almost every single situation. So those of you who are tuning in should understand that even though in the past couple of years, the Chamber of Commerce is getting a little bit more, um, you know, I don't want to call it pure greenwashed, but very um, savvy in their PR and their outward facing presence. They care about climate. That's what they say. They have a huge delegation, their largest ever at COP28 right now. However, their track record does not match up with any pro-climate, climate positive commitment. So um, for example, I'll just say um, there was a study in 2021 by Brown University at, that found that the chamber has actually been actively opposing climate policy progress for decades. Um, Influence Map, which is another great entity for folks to check out, uh, just released a report earlier this year that shows that the US chamber is almost always aligning with the American Petroleum Institute and the American Gas Association. So in um, at least six of the last key climate policy battles, the chamber was siding with their oil and gas members. Now that's not reflective of the chamber's membership. So if you look at you know, all of the companies that the chamber is supposed to be representing, a huge swath of them would identify as you know, pro-climate, mm -hmm. you know, focused on sustainability goals and so on. However, uh, they're letting the chamber lobby for them and the chamber is actively lobbying against those interests. So this is a really huge problem. As long as we're all letting the Chamber of Commerce have as much power as it has, we're continuing to let the oil and gas industry have as much power as they have. So we want employees and companies who are members of the chamber to be really looking at this and, and leaving the chamber and leading on climate policy. We, we want everyone to be aware. And even if your employer isn't a member of the chamber, it is time for all of us to be looking into how our employers are lobbying. Are they, are they opposing? Are they neutral? Are they getting involved? Because this is a time where we all need to be getting involved and, and um, act, act, actively advocating for, for progress here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm going to take this as an opportunity to plug both of our organization's websites because that's a great resource where people can go and actually learn more about the Chamber of Commerce um, and actually see some of the companies who are doing good and who are <laughs> doing some not so good uh, within the Chamber. So uh, Climate Voice's website, www.climatevoice.org, Change of Chamber's website, www.changeofchamber.org. Both of those links will be in the description below. Um, also any links that may come up in conversation, um, you know, will also be found in the description below. Okay. So just going to scroll to my next talking point. So, um, kind of like furthering your point, can you talk about why engagement from chamber member companies, um, doesn't work or isn't working, um, and how companies 
can actually leave and take a stance and still be able to survive and function and kind of not, um, you know, lose it, lose out because they're no longer part of the, the chamber. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So, yeah, I think it's important to know that unfortunately engagement thus far has not been working. Um, meaning chamber member companies have raised this issue um, from within saying we need to be doing more. Um, there was a, I believe it's called the Climate Solutions Working Group that was started in 2017 and chamber member companies raised the issue of climate advocacy. Um, unfortunately, since then, the only thing that has changed is more positive PR statements. Mm. Um, they did, I will give the chamber credit, they did lobby for um, HFC, uh, like the, a drawdown of HFCs, hydrofluorocarbons. Mm -hmm. um, so that was positive. So I will give the chamber that. However, um, like I said, with every other um, instance, they were lobbying on the side of the oil and gas industry. And I want to give a couple of examples, even since, so this is since 2017, when that internal working group was formed, uh, the chamber has been actively lobbying against like, you know, these key moments where we really needed to make progress. And luckily we were able to, when it came to the Inflation Reduction Act, but uh, the chamber lobbied against that, mm -hmm. you know, and that is the most promising piece of legislation we've seen um, in decades. Um, they also oppose the EPA um, methane standards. Uh, again, super key. I mean, we know like methane it is um, incredibly heat trapping. It's one of the yeah. most potent greenhouse gases. Uh, they oppose that. Um, they backed permitting reform, which would have fast tracked the Mountain Valley pipeline, which I'm sure many folks listening know how controversial that is. Mm -hmm. uh, the chamber was in favor of the Willow drilling project in Alaska, which we know uh, was also, I mean, controversial for many reasons, like environmental justice concerns, the impact on indigenous communities, and of course, wildlife, um, but also the, the sheer amount of emissions that that project is going to continue to be contributing um, to the atmosphere. Um, and then finally, um, the, the chamber fought against the EPA power plant rules too. And that's all very recent. So again, um, you know, it, this kind of uh, engagement from within hasn't yielded results yet. However, um, you know, I think this is what we need now. We need employees and, and, and companies to be really getting loud about this so mm -hmm. that's um, that's like the next step that we see. So we have a campaign at Climate Voice, and I'll just mention it so folks mm -hmm. can look it up. It's called Escape the Chamber, and that website is escapethechamber.org. Mm -hmm. And um, we encourage anyone who's tuning in to sign our petition, um, which is calling on companies to leave the chamber and lead on climate policy. And I really want to underscore um, the leading aspect here. So no matter what, like even if a company can't immediately pull out, you know, tomorrow, although it can be done, I just want to say um, in 2009, Apple left the chamber over climate disagreements and they are continuing to thrive. So anybody who's listening, thinking, oh, you know, that's the chamber does so many other things uh, for, for ta you know, tax policy or whatever it is, um, it can be done. You can leave and still thrive as a company. Um, but so we want we want companies to be actively, vocally, uh, forcefully leading on climate policy, publicly distancing themselves from the chamber. So I think that's that's a way companies can lead and and any employee can be advocating for this. I just you know, and I know there will be a lot of listeners who might not yet be in the workforce yet, but this is absolutely an essential uh, mm -hmm. thing that we all need to be do, doing going forward is just urging our employer, our employers to be get you know getting more aligned um when it comes to climate action yeah but so so yeah so there's like this, this speaking up um publicly distancing participating in and leading coalitions that are actively working for for climate policy yes yeah, speaking up is probably like the best way to combat the positive pr that you know is 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 being spun so uh you know become informed and use your voice it's one of the most you know, powerful tools we have. Um, and that's a good segue actually into our, our one of our next talking points um, is if you could tell us a little bit more about Climate Voice, if, you know, anything else you would like to add. Um, and if there's anything else that you'd like to add about Climate Voice's Escape the Chamber uh, campaign, you have the floor uh, to do so. Yeah, thank you. Well, I think, you know, I think 
Climate Voice is very much zeroed in on how employees and the private sector in particular can be weighing in, going all in on climate policy advocacy. Um, like we said, like we were talking about earlier, you know, we we need these policies to get us where we need to be. Um, so Climate Voice has a number of resources for not only employees, but anybody who wants to understand the connection between businesses and influence and mm -hmm. climate policy. So I think, you know, um, all of us have a, a level of influence, right? But wherever we work uh, can represent even more influence than our own individual power. So we are, as an organization, encouraging employees to look at that and to understand these connections between inf like where we work, what the influence and sphere of influence is, and, and how we can impact cl climate policy. And unfortunately, like I was saying, many of us are inadvertently, uh, you know, negatively impacting climate policy, mm -hmm. especially when we work, um, you know, at companies who are members of these uh, obstructive trade associations. Um, so we have a number of resources. Uh, we have a newsletter uh, that I encourage everyone to sign up for. It's called Connect the Dots. And again, you can go to climatevoice.org um, and read that. But uh, we publish that every month or two uh, on you know, key issues, like what's happening in climate pol policy space, like what can employees do? Um, our most recent issue was focused on COP28, what to be looking for, uh, mm -hmm. what to be urging your company to do. Uh, you know, to take the most meaningful action. Um, we also have a toolkit. I saw just mentioned we have a toolkit for employees who want to organize at work and get other employees involved in advocating for strong climate policy action. And that's called Climate Action at Work. And you can download that on our website too. Um, and when it comes to our Escape the Chamber campaign, I mean, I think the biggest thing is we just want to continue raising the awareness about what's going on here. So uh, whatever you can do to share this on, on social media, um, talk about it, uh, get people thinking about trade associations. It's kind of one of those like more wonky things, if you know, um, but it's really important to understand systemically uh, why we need to unravel this power that trade associations have. Yeah, well said. And and I'm just going to direct everybody back to those uh, links once more. So um, for those who want to, you know, take additional action, I do encourage you um, to uh, go to www.escapethechamber.org, sign the petition. You can read about it, share the petition. That always helps. Signing is important, but sharing is also important. Um, and also, please go to uh, Climate Voice, www.climatevoice.org to learn more about um, Climate Voice, their mission, everything about how you can get more in, uh, informed, involved. Um, and then also, if you're wanting to learn more about Change Chamber, how you can get involved, if you're looking to become a fellow or just looking to just learn more about our, our missions, that's www.changechamber.org. Um, Deb, do you have any any actions that you'd like our listeners to take that I didn't touch on? Or No, I think you've, you've hit them. I think, uh, you know, the easiest lift is to sign that petition at escapethechamber.org and to share it. Mm -hmm. um, that's really important. We're we're looking to reach a, a threshold of signers so that then we can go to chamber member companies and deliver the petition, urging them to leave and lead. And of course, um, make sure the chamber is aware um, as well of what we want. So um, the more that folks can help amplify that, the better. And I just, I want to say thank you to, uh, to Change the Chamber uh, mm -hmm. for the partnership and um, I know we worked together last year when you all were releasing your report on the chamber's track record when it comes to environmental justice. So um, just want to say thanks for the partnership. And I, I think it's just no matter where you are as a listener, um, whether you're a student or, you know, an emerging activist or a seasoned professional, whatever you can do to just be um, educating yourself about these connections. And then most importantly, taking action, um, raising your voice wherever you are. Um, thank you so much. Yeah, and, and thank you for joining us. Um, it was a pleasure to get to know you, to hear about Climate Voice, um, their mission, and you know why it's important to become informed about the chamber, um, why it's important to look into even potentially leaving the chamber, and you know just and why climate action is so important um, and needed. Um, and to wrap up this episode, we'd like to give our guests you know sixty minutes, a minute, two minutes, whatever, how much time you need, Deb, to uh, pitch anything else that you're working on, what you're excited about, or just really anything in general. So the floor is yours. 
Thank you. Well, I'm um, I'm in particular thinking about COP28, which is happening right now. And um, depending on when this goes live, um, we'll either still be in it or just coming out of it. But um, I just I just urge all of us to be keeping a close eye, not only what the chamber is going to come out with. I think, you know, hopefully there are some things we can be holding uh, the chamber more accountable to based on any outcomes from COP. But um, but I think we can also be looking to what businesses are saying and doing and and be holding them accountable. And of course, if you're an employee somewhere that was represented at, at COP, like we should absolutely be paying close attention. And uh, now more than ever, I mean, COP is another example uh, of just like this misalignment. You know, we're saying one thing, we're doing another. And um, and I, I, I think that this is just the, the time where we all need to get super focused on alignment and integrity and um, making sure we're looking beyond all of the greenwashing that's happening. Mm -hmm. um, so just uh, urging us all to 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 keep the energy going, and um, you know we are we are making progress, and glad to be working with folks like you to make that happen. Yeah. Well, well, likewise, yeah. It's 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 a there's a lot of good people working in this field, so it's there's a lot of you know positivity behind that. So, and once again, thank you for joining us. Um, we really appreciate it, Deb, um, and especially thank you to our listeners. Thank you um, for listening to another episode of Let's Talk About Climate. Um, before you go, please don't forget to like, um, subscribe, share, rate, wherever you're listening to this. Um, every link that we talked about, again, is going to be in the description below. So please, please, please go um, sign that petition, share that petition. It really helps everybody out. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram at Let's Talk About Climate Pod and Twitter at Talk Climate Pod. And then um, please visit our website, changechamber.org and Climate Voices, www.climatevoice.org. Uh, again, all the description or links will be in the description below. And with that being said, this was Let's Talk About Climate. Have a great uh, day and happy holidays to everybody. And uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks, everyone.